talk about our next tradition today. We're going to talk about the tradition of caroling. Now, who likes a good Christmas carol? Yeah? Now, has anybody ever actually gone caroling, like in the traditional sense? And we got a few in here. All right, all right. So um, traditionally, if you don't know what that is, a Christmas carol obviously is a Christmas song about Jesus. But caroling is when people would get together in groups and they would go and sing um, these Christmas carols in front of people's houses or in front of buildings and just spread the good Christmas cheer. Like Buddy the Elf said, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Got some more Elf fans. I love it. But uh, I actually got to go caroling when I was about eight years old in the church that we grew up in. This one year, we rented this like 40-foot trailer and uh, open air, and we put all these bales of hay on it. And what we did is we went from, from house to house to the elderly people in our congregation who couldn't leave home on their own anymore. We would pull up the trailer right in front of their house. Somebody would go do the ding-dong ditch and run back to the trailer. And when they would come to the door, we would start breaking out in these Merry Christmas carols. And let me tell you, the look on their faces, some of them just cried because it touched their hearts so much. Some of them, they were just beaming with joy. And it was such a blessing to share in that joyous moment of the Christmas season. Now, of course, being eight years old, I think I liked the fact that I got to ride in the back of a trailer on the highway a little bit more than the music, but it was still a great experience for the singing as well. Um, I love Christmas music in general. It, just, it can give us those warm and fuzzies, and we can just have such a good time. It reminds us that it's a great time of year. Um, I really like the remixes. Anybody else like those EDM remixes or am I the only like weird one in here? Like the, where they let the bass drop on Jingle Bells. That's good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. I love it. Like I should have the cue, like just let the bass drop with that Christmas carol. But um, why is music such an important part of the holidays? And let me back up. Why is music such a big part in our life to begin with? You ever thought about that? I think simply stated, music sets the tone. Okay, why do we associate Christmas carols with Christmas is because it sets a tone or it sets an atmosphere uh, for where we're going. There's just something about it that just sets the stage and um, makes or breaks it. Like you ever notice how a good soundtrack can make or break a movie real, real easily? It can be a mediocre movie, but have an amazing soundtrack and it changes everything. Like one of my favorite movies, Lord of the Rings. I mean, that's just a great movie across the board, but the soundtrack... That's some good stuff. I mean, people will like literally go across oceans to be able to like hear the original scores. It's awesome. Um, but have you ever been to a good party and noticed the difference that a playlist will make in the party? Why? Because the music can make the difference because it sets the tone. Music matters. I think it's more than just setting a tone too. Music connects us and moves us. You ever notice how a song will move your emotions? Just right? All right, it can make you go high or it can make you go low. It can make you contemplative and it can make you go nuts. All right, it moves our emotions. Music also moves our thoughts as well. The lyrics in a song, the theme of the song will direct our mind to think about certain things and ponder on certain things. It moves emotions, it moves thoughts, but how many know it moves your body too? All right. And this, I gotta restrain myself because I'm not gonna demonstrate this. Like, you ever seen that movie Wild Hogs where the nerdy biker says, The music moves me, but it moves me ugly? That's me right here. It moves me real ugly, but I like it when it does. And <laughs> too much, yes. I see, I see your face. <laughs> music plays an important part of our life because it moves us. Question is, where's it taking us? Where are we allowing the music to move us to? I think that music can be a great tool to move us in the right direction. It can also be a tool to get us to focus on the wrong things too. But as we talk about the, this topic, this tradition of caroling, what I want you to see is that Christmas carols, music can be a tool and a vessel to move us closer to God. Now, when I talk about carols, we're going to use the traditional definition. Not Christmas music, but Christmas carols. In other words, a song written in response to the coming of our Savior, to the coming of Jesus. Now, I don't think Mama saw, um, or I saw Mama kissing Santa Claus is going to lead us closer to Jesus, right? 
It might move us right in the other direction real quick. But when we sing away in a manger, or we sing come let us adore him, what that is, it's an invitation for us to move into God's presence. We are celebrating the birth of the Savior. This time of year, it's more than just the warm fuzzies. It's more than all the trims and trappings of the season. It's an opportunity to realign our hearts and our focus on the Savior. And music is such a powerful tradition to move us to a place to contemplate the power of the story. It's a powerful tool to help us to celebrate the gift that we've been given in Jesus. And more than that, it is a call for us to worship and adore a God who loves us enough to send his one and only son. So this morning, let's look at this tradition of caroling and how that can connect us to Christ. Now, like last week, I want to go back to the Christmas story and look, where did this tradition actually start? How does it have a part in the Christmas story? When we talked about giving, we saw the wise men and the gifts that they brought Jesus. So where does singing come into play in the birth of Jesus? So let's jump over to Luke chapter 2. What's just happened is Jesus had just been born in this stable. He's laying in the manger, had just come. And then Luke pivots, and all of a sudden, the scene opens up, and we're in a field with a bunch of shepherds. Verse 8, check this out. There were sheep herders camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town. A savior who's Messiah, who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. So what's going on right here is that Luke opens up this scene. There's just normal shepherds. They're just minding their business. Now, as you know, shepherds were nomadic. And in this culture, they were actually looked down on a lot. So as they'd move from place to place, they typically didn't have family roots anywhere. They didn't have a lot of social interaction. They were kind of outcasts. And they're sitting, minding their business, dozing off, just a completely mundane, normal night. Out of nowhere, this angel pops up. And the glory of the Lord shines around them. Now, how many know that's a dramatic entrance, okay? If you're having a pretty mundane, normal evening, and the glory of the Lord appears, and the angel with a message, that's pretty dramatic. That alone is enough to make an effect. So they're there doing their thing, and they receive this message. Not just any message. Now, this wasn't an FYI. This wasn't just for your information or, hey, I want to, here's a memo just to keep you in the loop so you know what's happening. No, this was history changing, life altering news. Something that these people would have been longing for for thousands of years for the coming of the Messiah. Amen. Boom, enter the angel. Boom, enter the message. Now, what happens right after that? Here's where we get this tradition. Verse 13, at once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. So not only did they get this amazing message and the glory of God all around them, all of a sudden they get to witness one of the biggest parties heaven has ever thrown as these angels come down and they start singing God's praises. That had to be quite the sight, isn't it? Not just to hear some good music, but you've just got the best message ever and it's being celebrated on heaven and earth. What a scene for these outcasts. This message was more than just this is what happens in humanity. This was hope. This was hope for people who had no hope. This was a reason to celebrate. And all in heaven and nature sang. Recognize that, Carol? Right here is where we get that. The news of Jesus' birth moved the shepherds. They did as they were told. They moved and found the baby Jesus and went and saw him. And not just that, they went and shared the news with everybody they met. 
They shared it with everybody they came into contact with. And I'm sure that this moment marked the rest of their lives. Big news, big celebration, big changes. Everything at this moment, now the attention came on the Savior. So, big news. How does carols then connect us to this? How does when we sing, how does that connect us to the birth of Christ? When we sing, how does it connect us to the relationship that we have with Jesus? Yeah, the shepherds got a pretty cool show that night. But what does that mean for us 2,000 years later? Yeah, we sing some songs that are old. Like the second song we sang, Emmanuel, uh, this morning. You know, that has roots um, in the year about 800. Like it's old. We're singing with generations. Why do we do that? How does that connect us? So in the next few minutes that we have together, I want to show you three ways that when we sing, how it connects us to the birth of Christ. So how do carols connect us to Christ? First of all, when we carol, it commemorates, it commemorates the birth of Jesus. Okay, when we are singing, we are bringing into memory what God has done. We're bringing the story of Jesus to the forefront of our mind. When we hear a song like Away in a Manger, all of a sudden we're not thinking or shouldn't be thinking just about, oh, away at Target is on layaway. No. All right. We should be thinking, wow, 2,000 years ago, God sent his son. When we hear these songs, it brings us to a place of contemplation. It brings us to a place to commemorate and remember the story. Rocking around the Christmas tree doesn't bring to mind what God did for me. But when I hear Silent Night, I think of the awe and the wonder of the coming of our Savior. David, King David wrote this in Psalms. He says, I will sing the Lord's praise. Why? For he has been good to me. I will sing the Lord's praise. Why? Because he has been good to me. You see, when we remember God's goodness... When we remember his greatness, his promise, it leads us to praise. But it can't lead us into that until we remember. So these songs aren't just good holiday feel-goods. They're an opportunity to reconnect emotionally and intellectually with the Christmas story. You ever notice how music helps us to remember? Beyond just Christmas... Like, I don't know about you, but I still struggle to remember the order of my letters. But there's a song that helps me get it right every time. All right? Do you know it too? A, B. Isn't that amazing? They got like six letters in a row. Correct. Everybody in unison. It's the power of music. The power of a song. It brings back to memory and engages our mind with what we're talking about. Or maybe... You remember that first dance you had with your spouse during your wedding reception. And that song comes on and it instantly takes you back. You can see the look in their eyes. You can still smell the smells. You can remember all the little intricate details. Why? Because that song has helped you remember that experience and that moment. Music connects us with memory and emotions and then it moves us. To this day, when I hear the song, it is well with my soul. I well up in tears. That was the song that they sang most prominently at my grandfather's funeral. The song connected me with the emotion, but it also doesn't help me just grieve. It helps me honor and remember his life. Music's powerful to help us to commemorate. It's powerful to help us remember and then engage. When we're singing these Christmas carols, We're reminded of what God did for us when he sent his son Jesus. We're reminded of the gift that we have been given. We're reminded of why we celebrate this season every single year. It's easy to get caught up in the the busyness of this time of year. What a powerful tool these songs are to bring us right back to the reason, right back to the hope that we have. What a tool it is to help us not get distracted in the material things so that we can focus on the eternal gift that we have been given. Away in a manger. Let it move you 
to think about how God humbled himself to send his son to be born in lowly circumstances. What God has did for you. Allow that to reflect and move your soul. When we sing Silent Night, we hear that to let it remind you of the peace that God has given you in his son Jesus. Let it remind you of the miraculous virgin birth. Don't let it just be a happy, feel-good moment. Reflect, remember, engage emotionally with the story of the coming of Jesus. Now, how many of you know songs help us to do more than remember, right? They do more than just helping us to reflect and engage emotionally with a powerful story or a powerful memory. Songs also help us to celebrate. They help us to celebrate, all right? It's more than just commemoration. It's a celebration. If you go to somebody's birthday party, what are you singing? Amazing, isn't it? Why? Because we get to celebrate people and that song is connected with it. Okay, when we sing Christmas carols, hear me on this. It's not just a time of silent reflection or to engage that memory and all that. It's a time to celebrate the goodness of God. Okay, carols, praise songs that we sing on Sunday morning or in the car and everything. It's more than just something to engage our minds. It is an opportunity to to declare the goodness of God in our life. Caroling is a great opportunity to declare God's goodness, especially this time of year. When we are moved to celebrate God's faithfulness, his goodness, his blessing, his peace, his hope, and his joy, It leads us to do what? It leads us to praise and celebrate him. David wrote this in Psalms 100 verse 4. He says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. You see, David, he knew a little bit about God's goodness, didn't he? David went through a lot of really bad times and he went through a lot of good stuff. And this guy saw the hand of God in his life. Now, when David's writing here, enter his gates with thanksgiving, he has something to give God thanks for. Understand, this is before we even got the gift of Jesus. He knew about the goodness of God. Do we have something to give him thanks for? Do we have something to give him praise for? Now, check this out, okay? Because of the gift that you've been given, because Jesus has came, because he lived, he died, and he rose again through our faith in him, we have been adopted into his family, all right? We're not just some religious people. We don't have just some traditions. We have been adopted by the king of kings and brought into his family, You see, when we are the child of a king, we have a right to enter into his courts, into his presence. No longer do we have to have permission to come in to the presence because we have been adopted. David understood something. What does he say? I'm going to enter into his courts. I'm going to enter his gates. What's he talking about? He's going to enter the presence of God through doing what? Through worship, through celebrating the goodness of God. When we gather on Sunday morning, it's a celebration because God's been good to us, because God has given us something, because we have been adopted, and now we can enter into his presence with thanksgiving and praise. At Christmas time, guess what? Those carols are an opportunity for the music to move us into God's presence, to not just engage with the memory and the reason, but to move us to a place of celebration and praise for God's goodness. Yeah. What an opportunity. But, but let me back up for a second. David also said this in Psalms twenty two twenty two. He says, I will declare your name to what? To my people. I will, in the assembly, I will praise you. What's David talking about here? He's not talking about going just at home and praising alone in in his bedroom. He's not talking about praising alone in his car. He says publicly, I'm going to praise you because what you did is so good. It's not going to just move me into your presence. I'm going to bring other people with me into your presence. It's an invitation for everybody to see what God has done. When we let the joy of the world, when we let Jesus' joy infuse us, when we sing his praise, it's not just an opportunity for us to go into his presence. It's an opportunity to bring other people before him and let them experience the life-changing power of his presence. 
Caroling's a lot more than just a religious tradition. It's an opportunity for us to move, for us to move and move closer and closer into the presence of God. But it starts with a celebration, doesn't it? Joy to the world. The king has come. Let earth receive her king. What joy is that? What celebration is that? When we sing that song together, man, it's like a party is breaking out. We're inviting people to celebrate with us the joy of the world. Hark the herald angels sing. We're celebrating that God has reconciled man, has reconciled sinners to himself. When we sing angels we have heard on high and we get to the Gloria course, that's a lot of fun. Why? Because we're celebrating the gift we've been given. We are celebrating the Savior. And we're saying, hey, y'all, come on with me. Come on with me. Come on. Come on. Let's just praise him together. And we let the joy of the Lord fill our lives. And we're being moved again. Where? Into his presence. We're going to reflect and commemorate the goodness of God. We're going to reflect and commemorate that story of God sending his son, making a way for us. But we're not going to just do that. We're going to let it move us to a place where we're entering his courts with thanksgiving and praise We're going to celebrate it, but we're going to do something else. We're going to recognize that when we sing a song to the Lord, that it's calling us to worship. All right, we're not going to stop with commemoration. We're not going to stop with some celebration. We're going to move into worship. When we sing, it prepares our heart and it cultivates our soul for God's spirit to show up and move in our life, for him to mold us for him to transform us, for him to sanctify us. There's something about a song that can just help us tune out all the worries of the world, isn't it? There's something about a song that can just help us stop the anxiety, to stop the worry, and start focusing on God. All of a sudden, it's not about me anymore. It's not about what I need or what I'm looking to get out of this. All of a sudden, it becomes about who God is. Now understand this, we praise God because of what he has done, but we worship him for who he is. Now it's important that we get this whole thing. When we worship the Lord through a song, how do we know who God is until we've seen what he's done? But once we have seen what he has done, we get a glimpse for who he is. And when we understand who he is, All of a sudden, again, it ain't about me anymore. It's not about my experience. It's about the glory. It's about the beauty. It's about the holiness of a perfect God. And we can just be enveloped in his presence and his love because of who he is. David understood this when he said in Psalms 95, he says, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Why? For he is our God. Who is he? He's our God. Who is he? He's our God, our maker. When we worship, it's an opportunity to bow down before him because he is our God. When we sing a song that focuses on the nature And the awesomeness of God, it allows our hearts and allows ourselves to bow down before him because he's worthy. We understand we're not, but he is. We start to worship him because he is our God. David says this in 99.5, he says, exalt the Lord our God, bow low before his feet. For what? For he is holy. Who is he? He's holy. We worship our God alone because he alone is good. Because he alone is worthy, because he alone is holy. You see, when we allow ourselves to move in his presence, when we remember his good deeds, when we celebrate what he's done, and we allow the Spirit to move us then into worship, and we get to see who God is, we can worship him from a place of spirit and of truth. We can worship him for a place that's not of selfish motivation not about what I need. It's not about what's going on in my life. It's not about the feeling and the sensation. It's about a holy and good God. It's about an omnipotent, an omniscient God who deserves my praise, who deserves my worship for the simple fact of who he 
is. When we sing, it allows our hearts, our emotions, our soul to move into that realm where we're getting closer to God's heart, closer into his presence to the point where we see his beauty for who he is. When we sing, O come all ye faithful, and we get to that verse where it says, O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. What a call to worship. What a call of worship. When we remember what God has done, when we praise him for what he's doing, it leads our heart to a place where we're called to bow down and worship him and adore him for what? For who he is, Christ the Lord. It's a calling our hearts to a place of worship. Again, not because of what he's done. We've celebrated that, but now we can worship him for who he is. Or when we sing Emmanuel, the song that we sang earlier today, we are worshiping him because of his very nature. When we sing Emmanuel, God with us, that's part of who God is, not just what he's done. It's easy for us to equate Emmanuel with what God's done for us, but really that's his nature, that he is with us. And we lift up a praise, we lift up a sweet song of worship because of who God is in our life. Caroling's a lot more than just an opportunity to feel good. It's more than an opportunity to get in the Christmas spirit. It is a call to worship. We commemorate, we celebrate, but in the end, we are called to worship Him. When we do this, it's not about the sensation. It's about the Savior who has been born. When we sing, it's not about feeling something. It's about being moved into God's very presence. Here's what I want to do this morning. I want to encourage you this Christmas. When you sing and you hear the Christmas carols, don't be content with just feeling good for a moment. Don't be content with just singing along with some family for the fun of it. Don't be content with just the song. Let the songs of worship, of celebration of our King, move us to a place of worship. Let's let it move us to engage with the reason that we celebrate. Let it move us to declare the goodness of God and celebrate. But don't be content with that. Don't be content with that. Let it move you to a place where you worship God for who He is. Again, not just what he's done. That's important. But let it keep moving you along to you connect with God's heart for who he is. Because no longer, no longer are we slaves to sin. No longer is the relationship between man and God broken. Why? Because we've been given a savior to restore. We've been given a savior that rescued us. We've been given a savior who has adopted us into his family. When we sing this Christmas, we don't sing for a sensation. We sing because we want to be moved into God's presence. We want to sing because we want to worship Him. We want to sing because we want to bring Him glory. We sing because we've been given hope, because we've been given salvation. Would you stand with me this morning? I want to encourage you this Christmas season. Let's worship. Let's not just celebrate. Let's not just have fun. Let's worship. This is the time of the year where we celebrate the hope that we have been given more tangibly than any other time. Let the songs of praise, let the songs of worship move us to a place. Let's go deeper than we've gone before. Let's not be content staying where we're at, but let's be people who are moving into His presence. Let the sweetness of his presence draw us in let's commemorate let's celebrate but let's be called into worship this year would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me before we wrap up I want to do something real quick maybe you're here and you don't have a relationship with God yet maybe you've never invited Jesus in your life maybe you've strayed from it we sing because we've been given a savior because we can be moved into his presence 
But to experience the presence of God, we need to have a relationship with the presence of God. We need to invite Jesus into our life. We need to acknowledge that we need Him. We need His forgiveness. We need to be adopted into God's family. Now, I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything weird, but if that's you and you say, you know what, Pastor Chuck, I need Jesus in my life. I need a relationship with God. I need to accept that gift that I've been celebrating since I was a kid. I need that gift in my life. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand so I can pray with you. Would you say, Pastor Chuck, that's me. I need Jesus in my life right now. I need a relationship with the Savior. Amen. I see your hand. Amen. Anyone else? Thank you. I see your hand. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else say, Jesus, I need you as my Lord and Savior. I want to worship you and be led into your presence. Amen. If you were one that just raised your hand, I want to pray this prayer, and I want you to make this prayer yours this morning. Jesus, I thank you so much. I thank you that you came to this earth as a baby. Lord, that you humbled yourself to come in the form of a man. I thank you that you lived a perfect life. Lord, I believe Lord, that you died for my sins, but that you rose again. And God, I accept your gift of salvation this morning. I invite you into my life. I ask that you'd forgive me of my sins, and I ask that you would make me whole. Father, fill me with your love. God, I ask that you would call me and mold me into the person that you have designed me to be. I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we welcome them into the family this morning? That's what we celebrate right there. Cool. And let me invite the rest of you. Would you just raise your hands with me for just a moment? Let's just thank God for his gift and let's allow ourselves to be drawn into his presence right now. Jesus, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we invite you. God, we thank you that at this time of year, Lord, we can take a break from the routine. God, not to just do stuff, not just to fulfill social obligations. But God, that this is a time of year where we can look back and commemorate what you have done for us. Father, I ask that what you have done would so move us, would so move us that we just can't help but desire more of you. And Father, I pray that we just be able to celebrate your goodness. God, even if life has been dark and hard, God, let us see how you have been good. God, how you're still with us, how you still have a plan, how you still have hope in the future for us. And God, may we just celebrate in your love. May we celebrate, God, the relationship that you have made a way for us. And Father, but more than that, God, we ask that you would move us into your throne room. God, that you would move us right before your feet. Lord, that we can bow down in adoration for who you are. God, connect and mold our hearts with yours. God, let us see you for who you are. And Father, may we worship you this Christmas season. God, not just because of what you've done, but because of who you are. Jesus, be glorified in our life. God, be made famous in our life. May your glory radiate from us so that all can see that you are Emmanuel, God with us. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.